We got an agent um, who booked all the nightclubs in the Midwest. You know, we wound up going out and getting cheap, flashy suits, and we were kind of a half-baked Vegas show band. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the club, Gigi. We're going to warm you up with a little tea water mess. Then we're going to take a little break. We'll see you down. Remember, the more you drink, the better we sound. You know, and, and we'd be doing, you know, every, you know, we'd start the night, you know, slow. This one club owner who owned this place called The Attic in Milwaukee was a very powerful guy. He was a Greek. He owned a couple city blocks of Milwaukee. And this nightclub was his playground. And he'd invite all his cronies there, you know, and hold court at the bar, you know. And, you know, now you guys, you're a good bunch of guys, man. You got a good band. But let me tell you something. In my club, you got to warm them up. They come in here after work, you know. You got to start them off with belly rubbers. With what? Belly rubbers, you know, like satin doll, misty. You know, I'm so misty, I'm too much. You know, start them off slow. You know, get them drinking, get them drinking. Then, you know, second set, third set, you can start hitting them with that soul stuff. Okay, Zoe, whatever you say, fine. So <laughs> we'd come into the club and we'd start with the soft, uh, you know, satin doll, da 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 you know. Lonely bull, Tijuana brass, you know, and, and onward it went, downward it went. And finally, when it got to about the third set, we'd be able to start, you know, sneaking in. Got that you did when you did when you did when you did, and I thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm a soul man, James Brown, The Temptation, Hold On, I'm Coming. You know, and one thing led to another, and then, you know, the set built, and uh, people were rocking. Uh, we started packing that place. It was uh, arguably the biggest nightclub in the Midwest. It was on a second floor, and it was a big place. It held seven or 800 people. And after, uh, after a couple of weeks, we, the word got out, and we, pack, we started packing that place even on weeknights. And Zoe was very happy with it. But also about that time, you know, we started working the circuit. We'd work Peoria, we'd work Madison, Wisconsin. We're working these clubs for about, oh, a year or so. All of a sudden, you know, Robert, who had been writing songs all along, started bringing original music into the band. And we loved it. Before we started doing completely original music, however, we, we first experimented with doing Chicagoized. At that time, we weren't Chicago. We were the big thing. This, this mob boss, this mob agent in Chicago. You guys, I got a good name for you guys. The big thing. Because you guys sound like you could be the next big thing. You know what I mean? So let's, let's make the name the big thing. Ting, T-I-N-G, the big ting, Joe D. Um, so, uh, as the big thing, we slowly evolved into doing customized arrangements of popular songs. But the club owners wanted to hear top 40. R&B was the top 40 at that time. Wilson Pickett, Sam and Dave, The Temptations, Fort Tops, the Rascals came along, we did some of that, The Righteous Brothers, uh, Aretha, James Brown. That was all the hit music of the day, which was great for us because it did have horns in it, although the horns played more of a secondary role. So we started taking a lot of these songs and customizing them, putting little instrumental stretch outs in them with horn ensembles where there was nothing but the horns playing uh, instrumental melody. And this started to become really inspiring. It started shaping a direction for me. The guys were digging it. The guys in the band were digging it. They're going, man, this is awesome. How did you do that? Well, you know, I listened to the vocal and I just kind of sing a solo in my head around the vocal that complements it. 
and then I voice it where it works. It's just kind of a, I'm humming a, an, an alternate melody that complements the, the vocal melody that's already there. And it seems to work. But we, as, as soon as we started putting the, these original arrangements and, and music into our club sets, we got fired. We got fired from one place after another. Mm -hmm. And we were on stage at the attic. The place was packed. Uh, and uh, we showed up at the club. <laughs> we had been slicking our hair back, right, with Vaseline, you know, because we, in those days, you know, the Beatles had, had come along. You know, and, you know, the Beatles, you know, the long hair, you know. And so the long hair was forbidden. Uh, Nobody wanted anything to do with, oh yeah, well you're hippies, you know, you're war, you're against the war in Vietnam, you're demonstrating, you know, Abby Hoffman, all that. So if you had long hair, uh, you were uh, a, a communist, uh, you know, a commie sicko, as they called us. So we used to grease our hair back, you know, or put it in a uh, ponytail or whatever. This night, you know, before this uh, show, we were, we were uh, just beginning the second week of a two-week engagement, and uh, we were at the, at the motel, and we had all taken uh, some, shall we say, mind enhancers, and Terry Kath went out and bought Sgt. Pepper, and we put that record on, <laughs> and it changed everything. We were psychedelic, and we were listening to Sergeant Pepper, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Magical Mystery Tour. George Martin, man. Now that's, that's horns. That's orchestral. That's melodic. And it's unique. And that's when we decided we're going to be us. Screw these clubs. We're going to be us. But that was a tough decision because we were looking a gift for us in the mouth, which was our bread and butter, which was our mm -hmm. food on the table. Do we roll the dice and be us and, and continue to get fired looking for work? Or do we play the game and just do us on the side for our own amusement until the right people hear it? Because we'll never pay our rent. Well, well, let's start by doing it tonight. Okay. So we showed up at the attic. We went on stage with our suits inside out and our hair. <laughs> our hair was long. We let our hair down. And the club owner's at the bar with all his cronies getting his butt kissed. We launch into... When I won your love, you were everything to me. How could I be such a fool by Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention? And we carved it. And as we're doing this and getting, just getting outside with it, the club owner turns and looks at us <laughs> like he wanted to kill us. He gets up off his bar stool, walks over to the stage. Mind you, the club is packed. He walks right up to the front of the stage and grabs Walt's pants leg. And he's doing this. And what he was saying is, Walt, you're all a bunch of You're fired. Get the hell out of my club. And I'm going, Walt, what did he say? What did he say? <laughs> well, I think we're fired. <laughs> Walt gets on the mic and goes, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a 10 minute break. Everybody chill out, relax, have a drink. You know, the more you drink, the better we sound. Yeah. As he's saying this, Robert Lamb dives off the stage and grabs the club owner by the throat. <laughs> 